yielding place to none as a loyal member of the British Commonwealth, Northern Ireland, still cherishing the memory of Lord Carson, demonstrates that loyalty in the most practical manner possible. Predominantly, for all its industrial strength, Ulster is an agricultural country. Its dairy farming is on a scale that entitles it to be called the Denmark of the British Isles. To mitigate the great milk shortage in Britain, Ulster has turned to the manufacture of dried milk, and the processed article comes from the dehydrating machines, rather like rolls of paper. In this way, millions of gallons of liquid milk that would otherwise be wasted, or of which full use could not be made, are preserved for the months during which milk in Britain is in short supply. Bursting beyond the bounds of town and city, the wartime industry of Ulster has invaded the countryside. Part of this dairy farm has been converted into a small factory making incendiary bullets. The change illustrates that Ulster is quick to improvise and doesn't allow a hint of the incongruous to stand in the way of the practical. Incendiary bullets that have shot down many a Nazi plane have come from this place. Cheek by jowl with the industrial invaders of the countryside, more than 100,000 poultry farms contribute to Britain's egg supply. Most of them are small farms, few having more than 200 hens, many less than 100. The daily yield of these little poultry farms is dealt with on the same lines as the milk output of the dairy farms. That is, it's collected and sent to government-controlled depots. The packing stations dealing with the enormous output have the latest possible equipment, each egg is tested by a sort of X-ray outfit which shows whether it's new laid, fresh or just an egg. When they've passed that test, they go to the grading apparatus which ensures that the wholesale buyers get the grade of egg they pay for. The government stamp is a guarantee that all eggs exported to Britain are new laid. The linen of Ulster is justly world famous. This flax spinning mill, like many others, now manufactures parachutes. It's a point worth mentioning that every airman who has safely bailed out and every paratrooper who has dropped from a troop carrier owe their lives to the deft fingers of girls. To those in the first place who make the parachutes and again to girls in the service depots who repack them after each use. Parachutes at one time were made wholly of silk. It's now possible to use more than 95% linen. So the flax of Ulster is saving the lives of the men who bomb Berlin and fight the Luftwaffe to defeat. In wartime, high-grade linen is a luxury which there's no time to produce. So today, this factory has changed over to war production and is making tail fins for sterling bombers. The management went out after this work sending a representative to an aircraft factory to find out what jobs could be done here. This place too has turned over to war production, making shirts for the forces. Life in the services is tough and the millions of men now in uniform severely tax the resources of the shirt manufacturers. The contribution of this linen factory is indispensable. Here's a sister Susie sending a message to a soldier. This shirt was made by an Ulster lass whose lips were made for kissing. So hurry up and win the war, you don't know what you're missing. Northern Ireland factories are making Sunderland flying boats. Those magnificent aircraft which have done so much to prevent the U-boats being victorious. Last year, the Nazi submarine campaign came near to defeat. But ever since the fall of France gave to the Germans submarine bases out in the Atlantic, the U-boats have been the deadliest weapon in the Nazi armory. The war at sea has been, as Wellington said of Waterloo, a damn close thing. The Sunderlands, ever since the war broke out, have been patrolling halfway across the Atlantic and down into the Bay of Biscay. It's not permissible to say how many flying boats have been manufactured in Ulster, but the output has been highly creditable.
Ulster's heavy industries have buttressed the Allied war effort since September 1939. In the gun room of a famous Ulster machine shop, dozens of six-pounder anti-tank guns are produced every week. And that's only one of the products turned out by this great firm. Among the many types of guns and ammunition they make here are anti-tank guns, anti-aircraft guns, and shells for airplanes, for 20 millimeter cannon, and for the Bofors gun. It's appropriate to end this brief survey of Ulster's war effort by glancing at her shipbuilding. This famous yard has surpassed all its previous records in building and repairing ships. This is a repair job on a liner that caught fire at sea. Loyalty to the British Commonwealth nowhere burns more fiercely than in Ulster. To that loyalty, Northern Ireland gives practical expression. Ulster puts all her resources at the disposal of the United Nations. The ships that Northern Ireland has sent to sea carried war goods to every front in the world. Her troop ships convey Ulster's matchless fighting men into the forefront of the battle. Thank <laughs> you.